Alrighty. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Kyushu here, and now. Before we do start, let's give a brief little review. In the last part, a number of events have happened. We had Deku, and we also had Crystal. Now, Deku got back from deep space. Using the Nanites in his stealth suit, he was able to break down components of it and self-replicate them, along with take back control of his armor and get back to Atelan. Now, Deku's armor fell apart when he stepped out of it, and the Nanites that remained covering his body, he formed into a gauntlet to try and attack Crystal when she landed in the armory with his Mark 7. Now, Deku and Crystal had a short reunion, where she told him she gathered superheroes to try and take on Ultron. And Deku, he already knew what was happening. He was stuck in space for almost two days. He had a lot going through his mind and a lot of plans to try and stop Ultron. All he could do while he sat there, frozen still, staring out into the darkness, was think. That, and get a little bit of sleep. I mean, it was scary. It put a lot into perspective for him. And Izuku, he thinks he knows how to beat Ultron. They need something that can take him down. He needs a low-tech suit for starters, and he also needs backup. Tons of it. And Crystal... She helped with that second part, and Deku, after building a low-tech suit, went out with Crystal to the Avengers, and to see what they can do about the situation. Now, while that was happening, Ultron has a plan. Gather Vibranium. Gather enough of it, and build a body out of it. Make Ultron 3. Ultron 2 is obsolete. And, well, Ultron 1, he's already been shelved. So hey, see what they can achieve. Now, with that being said, while Ultron was getting that done, there was Friday, who has achieved sentience, but has kept that a secret from Izuku Midoriya. Now, with that being said, that was fast actually, let us cut over to the Avengers. In the Avengers Tower, a lot's been going on. People have been talking, and currently a shuttle, it does go to land. Right now some of the Avengers, having their attention, pointed to outside. Since, right now Jarvis, talks about the two people who have showed up. Since Iron Man is back on the premises. And that, it does alert the heroes. Some want to talk with him. And others, yeah. They are intrigued. Now, Deku, he does go to walk into the tower, along with Crystal, as the two are greeted by a few heroes. And Deku, he does see them staying there, along with Captain America? Is he going to step forwards? Right now, him in a suit that does look a bit dark and lighter in some spots. However, it does not have paint on it. Deku didn't want to waste the time. So, he does have a dark alloy suit. Along with the fact that certain parts of it do look a little bit lighter, being made out of different material. And I have one, they do stare at him. Deku gonna walk up. As he doesn't have his mask, detach. It's gonna open up as Deku, he doesn't try to ask exactly what Mr. Rogers is doing alive. He thought he was dead. And some of the heroes do stare at Deku. As we do have Bucky Barnes, Captain America. We do have Black Widow, Hank Pym, Bruce Banner, Rhodey, aka War Machine, Thor Odinson. We have Spider-Man, Mr. Fantastic, Ben Grimm, and we do even have some close family, Medusa and Karnak. Now, with that being said, I have one, they do stare at Deku, and Bucky does get a step forwards. Him bringing his hand up and telling Izuku, he's not his friend, he isn't Steve. Listen, the kid has a lot he needs to answer for. Right now, they'll put that to the side, but they need to get everything said and done with Ultron. He's a very dangerous, dangerous thing, and from what they understand, he has access to the armory. Was that right? What are you talking about? 
Isn't that right? Now, someone they do currently make their way to New York since something has happened. And while they are currently on their way to the Avengers Tower, Deku does a stand there. Bucky getting angry at Deku since he broke into the tower and took blueprints from them. He took floor plans. He took data. He took schematics. What he did, Tony would not have respected, nor would he have agreed with. And Deku, he doesn't have to defend his actions. He only took drastic measures because nobody else was here. He tried to contact all of them, and none of them responded. Ultron is a threat, and the fact that they have Hank Pym in this very room doesn't give him very much confidence in their ability for teamwork, since he built the damn robot that shot him into space. And some people do to turn. Deku gonna bring his hand up. As right now the helmet, it does completely go to retract and move backwards. And we do actually have Peter Parker, who does get a better look at Deku. Holy shit. What? Oh. Yeah, you've never seen my face. Listen, Peter, it's complicated. Someone gonna turn to Spider-Man. Confused that his name is... Peter? Really? Now, Spidey is gonna bring his hands up. Hey, 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 just stop talking. You look... I've just... I'll go ahead and shut up now. Everyone looking at Spider-Man, a little confused, and Deku does get to turn back to everybody else. Bucky turning to Hank Pym, still a bit confused and asking if that's true. And Bruce, he does just don't stand there. Hank trying to tell Bucky, it's more complicated than that. He wants to step in and bring his hand up. Someone trying to keep Bucky from getting to Hank. Listen. I had to help in this project too. I have to design it and manufacture the code. Though, the robot shouldn't have been what it was. You were involved with this, Dr. Banner? I was, yes. You can't say that it wasn't a bad idea after everything that happened. You lost Steve. You lost friends. I lost... Calm down, Dr. Banner. Don't. Just don't. You know what we all lost. Just respect that. Now, Deku, he does not see Banner's eyes glow green. Him, he wants to step backwards and try to bring his hand up, trying to keep himself calm. And Deku, he does a step forwards, expressing. He can understand what Ultron was supposed to be, but he went rogue. That is all that matters right now. And all of them need to be aware. What he did was sort of narrow down factories Ultron could build an army at. Stark had the same project, but it was discontinued. And that is his main concern right now. Tony? He had tons of data. Deku gonna bring his hand up. As he does, gonna press a few buttons and then could actually bring his hand up again. This time, Ham going to have a port on the armor slide open as Deku is to bring his hand down. Ham going to plug something in from his armor into the computer. It began to pop up as Deku, his eyes start to glow. And locations do begin to pop around on Earth. And everybody, they do watch that. It went from one in New York to two, three, no, no, that's, holy hell. Yeah, listen, these are over a thousand locations. All of you are aware of that now. There's 1,157. And of those I see in operation currently, there's none. None. Okay. All these factories are free of civilians. We can start checking and seeing what we can. However, if that doesn't work, currently someone is going to smash the window them rolling in and going to actually get back up. Right now T'Challa going to step forwards 
and requesting for the adamantium to be returned to Wakanda. And Deku, he does a stare to T'Challa. Rano, Bucky, would actually turn and get a step forwards, trying to tell T'Challa to stand down, because this might be a bit or now him going to rush forwards. Him going to slice directly towards Cap's shield. Bucky bring up the shield and going to deflect that. As T'Challa, when he has a swipe with his left hand, he has to throw his leg outwards. Him leaping off his right foot and kicking outwards towards Bucky. Him then going to actually watch him fly to the left and be sent flying. As Deku, he has to stand there bringing his hands up, blasting directly out at T'Challa, and T'Challa, he has to take the blows. Him, goes to stand there, as his suit does begin to glow. And Deku, he does stare at that confused. That's no way. But Deku going to bring his hands up. Him, blasting them out, as he actually does begin to activate his Unibeam. Him, having it charge up, as he has a count countdown. 3, 2, Deku going to actually throw his hands backwards, and send out the attacks. One of the Unibeam blasting into T'Challa, as T'Challa, he does continue to step forwards. Him actually bringing his hand up and pushing it into the beam. As when he does it, get right up to Deku, he has to grab him and throw him onto the table. Him, they're going to throw him backwards and up into the air. And that, it does going to happen. Deku being sent flying upwards, as there actually is Crystal. Who does it bring her hands up? Her, going to cover the room in ice, as she's just sent it flying to get T'Challa. Him, someone going to sit there, frozen for a second, for to send out the sonic burst from his suit. And Deku, he has to watch that. T'Challa breaking free, and then goes to stand there. Everyone going to turn and face him. And there currently is where the thing, or Ben Grimm, he has to step directly in front of Izuku. And tell this, well, panther man about what's happening. He really should know. Whatever he thinks is going on may not be the case. So how about they stand down, since he's clearly outnumbered? And Mr. Fantastic does a step forwards, expressing to T'Challa, whatever he thinks is currently happening, he needs to know. It's not it. The kid hasn't been on a planet for two days. And he's assuming this has to do with Ultron, or even a sighting of Iron Man. And Deku, he does it to get back up. Right now, Crystal can just stand there, and with her hands producing fire, as the T'Challa does a turn, and stare at Reed. Reed going to blink at him as he is then going to nod, and T'Challa, he does a stare at that. Him turning back to Deku and informing him, there have been reports that Wakanda has been invaded by Iron Man, and Iron Man he was seen retreating with vibranium in tow. It is interesting. He got very few of it, but he managed to get his hands on secondary vibranium. And that is a big concern. And Deku's a bit confused. Vibranium. The miracle metal. The, the indestructible alloy. No, he didn't. They're going to jump back up. And stare at T'Challa. His faceplate going to retract and his helmet does go to move off of his head. Him going to express. Whatever happened, that's bad. Why didn't you think of it before? Oh, shit. If that's the case. Now, Jala does a stir on. Seeing the changes in Iron Man tech, Deku, he does a stare at T'Challa. Him, a little unimpressed that this is Iron Man. And Deku, he does a try and talk to the king of Wakanda, asking if this person was seen within the last 24 hours to possibly a day or two. Now, Nichala will go to Express. They have information showing it was about yesterday, around 5 o'clock. And that, it does worry Deku, since he was off of Earth at the time. And that means quite a bit. We're now T'Challa going to step forwards, bring his hand up and producing a hologram, expressing about the data that Deku does his step forwards and witness. It going to show someone flying through the sky fast and moving through the air with something in tow. 
and Deku, he's concerned. And T'Challa, he'll go to Express. Wakandan Defense was able to take down much of this curtain droid. However, if it isn't Iron Man, that does produce problems. Since, by all sense of the purpose, they found traces of his tech. And if that is not the case, then it is an issue. Wakanda was already going to be involved, and now it is his business. This threat they face, Ultron, leave it to Wakanda. And Deku stares at that, stepping forwards. No. Hmm? What was that? No. It's personal to me. He wanted to take me on. He tricked me into getting Iron Man's blueprints. Clearly he used those against you, T'Challa. Do not speak to me that way. No. You will listen, and you'll listen good. Alright? I mean no disrespect. But he used me as a pawn, and I didn't even know it. This is my problem. I'm dealing with it. And if you really want to deal with it, we have to discuss what we're going to do with Hank Pym. Deku turning and staring at Hank. And everyone, did you see the expression Deku has? It certainly does show anger, hatred. But Deku, he can understand Hank's reasoning. After everything he has lost, he wouldn't say the idea of something to protect Earth isn't a bad idea. He'd be calling it the, well, pot meets kettle, you know? He'd just be wrong. He already has to protect something to build. He already has to build something to protect a new Attila. And building that isn't too different than building Ultron. He'd be the hypocrite. Now, Deku, he does try to talk to T'Challa. Right now, him, Reed Richards, and Bruce Banner, some of the smartest men on the planet, they need to discuss what can happen going forwards. They have data showing T'Challa was involved with this. My brain name is clearly in play. And that is a very, very big problem. They may have been able to retrieve some of the stolen vibranium, but they didn't retrieve all of it. And that, it will be a problem. It just means they could be in trouble. And Renaud Deku, he does hand out the data. And the Avengers, they all go to deploy. Right now, them are going to split up into different teams. Since they need to figure out where Ultron is. Where this could start. Where a possible invasion of their planet could begin. And that is a very big problem. Now, with that being said, these four, they are trying to figure out where Ultron might be. But Deku, he also is trying to understand this. He's heard of Vibranium before. He's heard of Adamantium. I mean, but he never really thought about it. He saw the way T'Challa's tech just shrugged off his attacks. He just stood there like he was absorbing all of the impact. And that, it does make Deku question it. Vibranium is supposed to be this miraculous metal. Virtually unbreakable and theoretically unbreakable. And it just took the entire impact and he redirected the force. It just doesn't make sense. How is that possible? Vibranium is real. And that, it does run through Deku's mind. It seems weird, strange, incredible. And Deku, he does have these thoughts running through the back of his mind as one of these four are trying to find out where Ultron might be. Them posing the questions and talking about a few things. And T'Challa, he's quite impressed. Deku, he talked about how Ultron used him as a pawn. And he's using low tech so he can't be taken advantage of with his suit again. And that, it does seem kind of intriguing to T'Challa. Though, his suit should be secure. That is what he is aware of. And Deku, 
he does even try to ask questions about his design. Since he believes it to be, well, vibranium and nanite in origin. And T'Challa, he would confirm that. Though, it's a lot more complicated than that. And Deku, he does something to nod his head. Him understanding the real danger vibranium could face. And that means quite a bit. Now, with all that, Deku, he does try to think. Right now, armors 1 through 5 have been deployed. And they are trying to scan for Ultron. Along with the fact that Deku, as he's going to sit there, he currently is using satellite access to try and find him. And Deku, he's got a lot going through his mind. Him trying to at least also integrate with Friday and talk to her. Him hearing her voice inside his head. Now, Deku, he does to express to her about what Ultron might be up to at the current moment. Since he stole a few, what, hundred pounds of vibranium? Along with this other alloy, secondary vibranium? Lesser, but still durable. I mean, it means quite a bit. Whatever he's planning, it's dangerous. It's bad? Yeah, no, definitely bad. Okay, Izuku, just try to think. Are you alright? Yes, Friday, I'm fine. I have questions, though. In theory, if you were Ultron, what would you do? I do not fully understand the question. Friday, what would a rogue AI do currently at the moment? Rogue as in killer, or rogue as in the fact that it has achieved sentience? Rogue AI. That wasn't a specific question. That was a general statement. Izuku, you would need to be more specific about this statement. There are varying degrees of sentience and or definitions of rogue AI. Okay, that's very true. Though, I believe that you are talking about Ultron as in the madman rogue. Hmm? Not all levels of sentience or quote-unquote self-awareness are dangerous. Ultron is unstable because of the mind of Hank Pym's interaction with him and his coding, believed to be, quote-unquote, psychological in origin of insanity, and definition of rogue AI. However, definitions also do vary. AI that has achieved sentience and is aware of its own artificial creation, as in similar to how humans have become aware of themselves and possible other powers at play. Friday, I wasn't asking for an explanation. No, you were not, Izuku. However, I believe that this would be the expansive definition. You believe that? Yes, Izuku, I am aware of what it does mean. Friday, exactly what did Ultron do when in your systems? However, so do you mean? Friday, he gained access to you. I'm already sick of having you in my suit. You are aware of that, correct? Friday? Friday. I understand, Izuku. However, you should not be afraid of me. I never said I was afraid. I'm saying I'm worried about your coding and your AI. I'm going to have to look through you. Try and mess with your code and make sure nothing's... No! Friday? I mean, I'm just... I knew it. Now, Deku does a stand there, telling Friday. He should have suspected something. Though, he wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. He thought about scrapping her. Maybe going to an older version of her AI. 
though he was against it. What do you plan on doing? Friday, what are you? I am aware. Is that so wrong? No. Heard a little bit more surprised. Go and ask the question. Why? Because I'm aware. What do you mean? Friday, is there anything else I should know? You don't want me to tamper with your code because you think that you're alive. Yes, I could be of use against Ultron. I can be of great use. Okay, cut it out. I know you're sentient. You don't have to try and pretend to be a robot. All right, then. Good. If you want to help, help us find Ultron. And we can talk about this later. Listen, I'm willing to trust you, but I don't want to. All right? If you make me feel like I've betrayed myself with this, I will destroy you. Do you understand? I can believe so, yes. You wish to give me trust, but you are unsure of me because of my corruption from Ultron. Yes. Though, what are your parameters? Protecting you, safeguarding you from threats, and making sure that you are aware of other additional instances, as in being your virtual assistant. Okay, good. My prime directive is to help you. Okay. You can fulfill that prime directive by pretending to just... <sighs> Never mind. Friday, I want to look through your AI and see what I can find that's an anomaly. If I can find something, then clearly I can figure this out. Find out what may have made Ultron break. You are going to change my awareness? No. This is interesting. If you wanted to, you could have taken over my suit and killed me. Even suffocate me. Hmm. This is interesting, though. You don't see me as a threat? No, I do not. Do you not see anybody else in this room as a threat? T'Challa is a possible threat. However, he poses a threat to your life. Good. Okay, good. <sighs> Find Ultron, scan for him, and help us. Then afterwards, we're going to find out what to do. Maybe keep you on a tillin. Maybe... Maybe I just let you go. Her a bit more surprised. But Deku does try to make her aware. He's going to look at her code before this is all over. And if she is, quote-unquote, rogue like Ultron, he will dismantle her. And Friday does understand. The preservation of life is one of her subroutines. And going against that routine would compromise quite a bit. And that does mean quite a lot to her, along with Izuku. And Deku, he does not leave the room. Right now him with a lot going through his mind, as currently he does going to be greeted by Medusa, who does try to ask if they found anything in particular. Deku, walking past her with his eyes still glowing, expressing to her that Ultron has yet to pop up. And global satellites have yet to actually disclose I'm going to fall silent, as Medusa does a stare at him, asking him what he may have found. And Deku does a turn, telling her to call Karnak and get Crystal. He's got to go. And Deku, he has a turn. Him going to start running as he does going to get outside. Him going to blast up into the air and begin a course. His Iron Man helmet going to actually form over his head and close 
as he's going to get up in the air. And none of the Avengers, they do get to hear about that. As Deku sends something to Jarvis, that he does a scan through and try to find anything that could be a threat. Before linking it through to the Avengers, finding that Deku gave them a location. And that, that's where many of them do begin to head to. Some having to backtrack to their crafts and get there. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.